Well, 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 welcome back to the shop, boys. Long time no see. I'm going to do a quick demo of the new end of injection target video. If you have the old one, it is junk. It is incorrect. It's going to give you wrong data, wrong everything. You don't want it. Get rid of it. Uh, this current version is going to be 1.6. If you don't have 1.6, you're living in the Stone Age, buddy. All right, so this first part, um, I don't think anything has changed. I did add some camshaft calculators here. These are in no particular order of preference or anything like that. They each have a little bit something that I feel like does something better than the other one or maybe just targeted information that you would want. Hopefully these links never go dead, but whatever, it is what it is. So next we have uh, the scanner. This operates the same way. Um, you'll notice you have copy labels here, so you can use that uh, to generate these column headers in here. So like I have, if we go to graphs layout. Um, so I'm basically saying if EQ commanded is one, and I'm not filtering out for transients or anything like that. So. You know, it is what it is, but all these breakpoints are in 128 RPM increments all the way up to 8192. So we'll close this. Copy with axis, as always, for my tools. Paste that in. And we're going to do the same thing for power and rich. Paste it in. Now, well, I'll, I'll save a little. Uh, well, I'll show you one thing, I guess. Uh, you notice we have, like, we're jumping up to 12 milliseconds, and look at these little, little, you know, let's get rid of them, right? So you can delete these. You can edit them, you know, if you wanted to. I wouldn't suggest that you would need to or want to, but you do have that ability. It's your tune, your car, I guess. Why not? So now we have those. We need to go in the editor. You notice we've gotten rid of the normal RPM table. So we're just going to start copying our tables in here, just like so. This operates the same way that it always has. So you get to see the excitement of computer operating right here. <laughs> now, um, all this stuff I'm not going to fill out, but let's add the short pulse header, and we'll, we will recap just for the uh, new folks out there. So, as you saw in the first channel, uh, not the first channel, the first video I did, the intake cam boundary offset. If you have a truck ECM, you're going to want to put negative seven in there. Fuel pressure, from what I've seen, is always zero. In case something changes, I mean, I'll leave it in there for you, but we'll just leave it seven. So, for me, a zero. If you have questions, you notice you can hit the question marks here. We have some information um, that explains this. There's a link down here that you can go to a thread on HP Tuners to read more. Here's some examples. So this is from a truck ECM. You can see when the intake cam is parked. Uh, this is not commanded degrees. This is actual measured degrees. Um, so when it is parked, it's moving the boundary back seven degrees. LS3 cam when it's parked and LS3 never came with the variable cam. Why this is even filled out, I don't know, but either way, uh, zero is zero. Um, you also see some examples of the fuel pressure offset table. Uh, zeros for the few two of the examples that I've seen. I can't promise that they're all zeros, and I can't promise you that all variable cams are seven, but pretty sure they are. Um Injector off time, um, we'll cover that. I talked about that a little bit in the first video. Uh, this is just looking at the injector offset, um, pressure delta ignition voltage. In my idle area, I'm about 0.9 milliseconds offset. So just generalizing, sometimes more, sometimes less. Short pulse limit, you're going to copy that from the tune, and then you're going to copy your short pulse adder. Once we have all that, we can go over here to the graph. Now, I've simplified this. I mean, everything that used to be here is here, but like boundary, uh, we don't really care about the boundary. We, we do care about end of injection target, but we don't necessarily need to see boundary. We can add it 
<clears throat> and of course, it's going to be hidden behind this other one. So like if I take off this guy, you can see it's hiding back there. So we'll take that off. But uh, you can add uh, whatever you want to in here. Uh, but a lot of the stuff like the piston, top dead center, bottom dead center, intake peak lift, kind of unimportant. The only real cam events that you need to be overly concerned about would be uh, exhaust valve closed and inject, uh, intake valve open. Uh, also, you can now zoom with the mouse wheel in and out. And you can also, if you hold down control, you can move the thing up and down as well. Um, and then this link kind of explains all that. If you ever get lost, control zero will return you um, or reset everything. Um, I've also added these little vertical marks. So it says one, but this is just uh, dealing with the software that I have. So one is 128, right? So if I put in three, you're going to get every third RPM breakpoint like this. But Sometimes it's going to be easier to see, like, where is this end of injection track down to and then look down to here. Uh, so that's what that is. Now, uh, you can see that we have some gaps in here. So some of the functionality that I've added, if we go over here, um, probably we can get rid of this stuff. But if I wanted to, I can highlight, right click and interpolate. So there we go. Filling in the gap. Same thing here. I can highlight this, interpolate, and now when we go back over here, we have some nice solid data. Uh, the closed loop only just shows you that. Power enrichment just shows you that. Now, I will show you this. Uh, what happens if we start getting into trouble? So I'm going to add, let's just start increasing this up. Actually, let's do our interpolate. 15, and let's just interpolate. Come here, and you notice we have a little spiky doodad hanging down. So I'm going to zoom out. And so what you're going to see, I went around and around how the best way to show this. So um, you'll notice uh, this is our zero. Let me do degree interval of uh, 160. Yeah. So here we have our zero line right here. Well, we can't technically go past zero. I mean, we can, but this is just showing you, well, where is this actually coming down? Because I didn't draw the valve events and stuff down here. So this is showing you how close you're getting. So I'll hit control zero. We can see. And then if we turn on injector off time, which should never be an issue because we have properly size, sized our fuel system, what do we see? This injector, start of injection, is trying to encroach in this dead time, this injector off time, and the ECM will not allow that. So we are not getting our full duty cycle in here. Uh, other than that, I think this for the most part is the same. Um, the raw output, I've done quite a bit of changes to. So this is telling you your normal end of injection target. This is telling you your start of injection for closed loop. And then it does this calculation down here. So this says spray after exhaust valve close. A negative one is telling you you're spraying one degree before the exhaust valve is closed. A positive one is telling you you're spraying one degree after it is closed. And so you, you can see, I don't know, I don't have any zeros in here, but if it was uh, a zero, it would be in black font. And that's basically showing you that you're spraying exactly at exhaust valve closed. Um, and then you can also see that we we have these rows here for closed loop. We also have two rows that do the same thing for power enrichment. So in this case, it's trying to spray 525 degrees before the exhaust valve closes. Um, and now we can look at uh, this next row or next chart. Um, this is going to be our um, injector duty cycle, not necessarily duty cycle, but I should say our pulse width is in degrees of crank rotation. And then this row is telling you duty cycle in percent. And so you see we have data for closed loop and we also have data for power and rich. And as you can see, 103, remember it's encroaching into our injector off time. 
And guess what? We have this button here that says, do I want to calculate injector duty cycle percent factoring in that off time as 100%, which we do, right? This is real world. Um, if you turn it off, you can see, well, if I did not have an off time, I would actually be two degrees okay, right? But since we have the force downtime, uh, we can't use that extra time. And so we are exceeding what we, we can do. Uh, we also, I added this injector off time versus injector duty cycle cost. So this is now, well, let me close this and go back to the editor. So it's taking this initial injector off time going here, and then it's just graphing it out. So as the milliseconds, well, the milliseconds stay the same, but as the RPMs rise, this is how much duty cycle you're losing. So you can see we're about here in the sweet spot of our shifting area, about 7,000 RPM plus or minus. We're about 5% duty cycle that we don't get. Uh, we can look at it the opposite way. So this is the on-time percentage. So this is kind of where we were before, like really with that off time, you know, about 95% true duty cycle is what we can achieve. Um, and then if you click on this link, this is going to take you to that article um, from Greg Banish. Uh, talking about uh, the injector duty cycle um, and off time and getting hot. Um, so there's some stuff that you can read. I would recommend uh, reading it. It's definitely good. Um, I think that is about it. Again, all this software and research that I do um, is free. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you use it. I hope you go faster. I hope you've learned something from all of this work. If you wouldn't mind, if you hit help and uh, you want to support me, you can do buy me a coffee and um, this will, uh, you can donate to my PayPal that way. I would appreciate it very much. It means a lot to me. Um, if you can't, I get it. Um, I understand. Um, there's also super thanks in YouTube, but I will caution you that YouTube takes about one third of the money that you do through, through super thanks. And they take even more if you pay through Apple Pay. So, of course, I'd never get upset if anybody wants to donate one way or the other. But if you want to make the maximum impact, PayPal is the best way. But if you don't have PayPal and you want to use uh, Super Thanks, uh, by all means. But um, if you have questions about this, let me know. Um, if you have any uh, problems or defects or whatever errors, again, just reach out to me on the forum or, or post on YouTube. Anyway. Take care, bros. Later.